on Divorce Court today. He kept their romance a dark secret hidden from his family. Before Dwight enters the military, Erica wants their seven-year relationship brought to the light. Erica Young and Dwight Harley have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in Divorce Court, before your vows, starts now. Ms. Young and Mr. Harley, uh, you're looking to get married, but you're not really sure. You're getting ready to get deployed in a couple of months, and you want to know, should you get married before you go? You've given me your marriage license and given me permission to tear it up. Should I think this marriage is not a good idea? Or I could give it back to you if I think this can go somewhere with some words of advice. I've also got a compatibility test. You've taken it, and I'm going to talk to you about that momentarily. But before I do, I'm going to start with you, Ms. Young. Why don't you tell me why you're contemplating marriage but not quite sure it's the thing to do? All right. Um, Your Honor, I love him, definitely. Um, we've been together for a while now. But he is just sometimes, in a lot of situations, way too passive. Um, he can be, you know, when it needs to be time, I don't expect him to be very aggressive, but assertive in a lot of situations, he's not. And that's the biggest problem. Give me an example of a situation where you think he wasn't quite assertive enough. Okay, when we first start dating for about the first year, he would not tell his family. Um, so his family thought that he was living in a different place when mm -hmm. he was living with me. Mm -hmm. And so finally, I think the second year into it, uh, last February, I was at dinner with his family, and his family specifically asked him, are you still living with, you know, the people that he was supposed to be living with? And he just said, yes, you know, and he just denied the fact that we were even together. We d he denied the fact that we were in a committed relationship. And I feel like he, like, it definitely hurt, you know? Right. Just, we've been dating for so long, and you, you're right in my face, you're, you're going to say... You're good enough to sleep with and live with exactly. and, and eat food, but you're not good enough to be taken in front of his family. Exactly. Mr. Harley, is that accurate? I wouldn't say it's completely accurate. I don't deny that I love her and that I'm with her. I have a very conservative family, mm -hmm. so me moving in to Erica's place, like, maybe three months after... I moved down to Gainesville. Looks kind of like, you know, like I'm rushing into things, things mm -hmm. like that. And mm -hmm. I feel like I'm old enough to where I don't have to worry about that. So I just feel like I just If didn't you're talk. old enough not to worry about that, aren't you old enough to tell your mama, hey, this is what I'm doing? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. I Your mean, Honor. seriously, yeah. seriously. If you've grown enough to make the decisions, you're gr grown enough to speak that decision. Correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. Right. Let me ask you what you why you think marriage is a good idea, but what your concerns are about Ms. Young. She's very... She, like, rushes into things, like... She, I'm sorry. She, she rushes into things. She rushes into things. Yes. Give me an example. Simple stuff like the I love you and, you know, things like that came, like, within, like, three months, you know. Women will do that, though. Can I say I, You know what I mean? They, they, I, they'll tell... In 90 days, they'll <laughs> tell you they love you. That's, they, <laughs> that's, that's a woman thing. But yeah. I was right. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say that... But I was right. But I was right, <laughs> and he loves me back. But what I want to say is, going back in the history, I, I knew him when we were in high school. I was in ninth grade, and he was 11th, and he was in 11th grade. And we were really close friends all throughout there, and we were on the track team together. So it's not like I just met this man. Right. Listen, you know I have to explain the timing of your feelings to me. <laughs> and it, I totally get it. it you, you, don't, you don't have to justify that. Mr. Harley, why don't you give me something else you believe she's rushed into that gives you pause about marrying her? You know, financial things and, you know... Which she's not good with money? She's okay with money. Is she extravagant? Does she... she does she blow the money on silly stuff? At times, she can have a little, you know... Or a little, you know, just space where she just goes and just blows money at a certain point. Your Honor, can I just say that sometimes, yes, as a woman, I do... Now, don't tag womanhood <laughs> with, 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 with inability like to, 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 to <laughs> control yeah. ourselves at the mall. Yes, I do shop a lot, but I shop within reason. I don't just, you know... Yeah, I may shop at, you know, the nice stores in the mall, mm -hmm. but I always shop on the clearance, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And so I do spend money, but I also help make the money. I'm not just, you know, living off of him. We, we split things 50-50, or we're supposed to. You say, Ms. Young, that he's not as assertive as you would like him to be. Mm -hmm. And there was a situation in the parking lot that you say illustrates your concern in that regard. Why don't you tell me about that? Yes. 
he had just got off of work, and I um, sometimes occasionally come meet him, and we go to dinner afterwards or something like that. I was driving, and I passed where the pedestrian walk was, and there was a lady with, there was two women and a child in the seat, and instead of, or in the stroller or cart or whatever. And then instead of them waiting for the driver, which was me, because they didn't have the right of way to go, um, they insisted on trying to move out in front of my vehicle. And instead, since they got upset that I wouldn't stop for them, um, they, like, punched my door. Why wouldn't you stop? I didn't stop because they didn't have the right of way. So? Well, well, I mean, what do you lose by letting a person pregnant with a baby get across the street? She was not pregnant. She, she did have a child in the cart, but it was just the attitude that she she had and I was you can't let on. that kind of stuff bother yeah. you you really can't that's just silly but go ahead yeah so anyway so she punched my car window and that's mm -hmm. when I of course me being me you know I got out of the car and was gonna have a conversation with her and then so the police you know came um, and I he saw what happened and he just sat in the car he sat in the car as if, like, you know, he didn't say anything to police officers. And, yes, I was... Did he tell you not to get out of the car? Yes, he told me to keep going. And that was exactly the right thing to do. What you did was ridiculous from beginning to end. It's not that he's not manly, that you were being silly. Somebody says, oh, I'm going to walk... You let him go by. What is it? It's going to cost you a second and a half? You got your ego all involved in... They're walking in the park. I got the right... Who cares? Who can? Mm -hmm. And then they can be crazy, because half of the people out there crazy now. Go ahead and shoot, bang, bang, pop, pop, pow, over nothing at all. Yeah. You, oh, he was right. You were wrong. Mm -hmm. End of story. Next, they have joint and separate bank accounts. But who is really paying the bills? Are you considering marriage but aren't sure that your intended is really right for you? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Real Relationships in Crisis, Divorce Court continues. Now, Ms. Young, I didn't buy that other story, but you have, have a couple of other issues mm -hmm. you say demonstrates his failure to be appropriately assertive. You say something about the checking account and something about a car. Why don't you tell me what occurred with respect to those things? Um, yes, Your Honor. Part of what, whenever we did move in together, a little bit afterwards, probably like a year and a half into the relationship, we are like, oh, well, you know, we have all these bills together, our cell phones and his name and the, you know, the car that we have or whatever. All the bills are majority in his name, mm -hmm. but I do contribute to them. Um, and so what we decided was we were going to get an account, a joint account so that we can pay the bills and we can save. We have a savings and a checking. Um, each month, well, each paycheck, I should say, twice, twice a month, we were supposed to be putting some of the money into mm. the account, the joint account. Right. I have my money for my job, and it goes straight into there. I have a direct deposit. Mm -hmm. However, he said, uh, whenever we first got the account, oh, I don't want to have a direct deposit. That's not necessary. I'll just transfer over the money mm -hmm. into the other account. So maybe months go by, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, our savings is building, and my, our checkings is building, but it's only from my money. Why haven't you put money in there? Oh, well, I have bills to pay, and I don't want to uh, put the money over into the account until I pay those bills, his separate bills. Mm -hmm. And it was just excuse. Were they household excuse. bills that he was paying, or it was just his personal bills that he was it paying? It was the car and the in car insurance. But for our personal bills, pretty much every bill he was still, even the ones that was ours, he was still paying with his, like, account. Why is that a problem? Because we made a joint account for him to put money in it so we can have a savings. But only I was putting all the money that's but in our But he was account. still paying the household bills. He just was doing it out of his own account instead of taking the extra step to put it in the joint account. Correct, for savings. He hasn't savings. put any money to the savings, savings but account. he's been taking out. Okay, okay. Uh, what would you like to say about that, Mr. Harley? I'm not good with... Uh, necessary. Okay. Um, I'm not necessarily good with sharing, I guess, in general just money mm -hmm. so I find it easier to just keep it in my account and you know pay the bill still but okay. just keep it in my account okay 
Um, we've been talking about what concerns you. Now let's talk about what you like. I want you to give me 90 second sales job on why Mr. Harley is the man for you. Okay, well he's definitely my best friend. I feel like when I come home, if I have a stressful day or anything, anything exciting that will happen to me, he's the first person that I think about. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait to go home and tell him. And it's just really great to feel like I have someone that loves me unconditionally and I can mm -hmm. be myself around and he gets that and I'm good enough for him and, and I'm more than enough for him and he just loves it and I love him unconditionally and I love that about him. Okay. Mr. Harley, give me your 90 seconds on well, why Ms. Young is the woman for you. With Erica, like she's, she's beautiful, you know, she's nice, like she's great, like everything. Like anything I need, like anything I need support on, anything like that, she's always there for me. Anything I need, you know, she'll make changes. Like if I need her to be somewhere with me, she'll make change and she'll be there for me. So, you know. so she's right there with you, she's supportive, yeah, anything she's I on need. board. And um, when did you decide to go into the Army? Well, I've been thinking about it for at least a year. Um, I've, I've attempted it maybe like a year ago. Um, things didn't quite work out and I had school and stuff like that. But now that I feel like I'm ready to go in and, you know, serve. So with that, I want to make sure we're good before I go in and mm -hmm. commit to the Army. So are you cool with the decision for him to go in? Not that you have any right to be cool or not mm -hmm. cool, but if you're in yeah, it I together, you have, him. yeah, you have, are you supportive yeah, of it or? Yeah, I definitely, I, like, at first, um, a year ago when he brought it up, I felt like I was being so selfish, and, you know, I was just like, oh, no, baby, I don't want you to go. But now, like, we talked about it, and I, I just support him 100%. I know his reasonings for going, and I know that he wants to be, you know, he wants to do better for himself and he wants to serve his country and he's been wanting this isn't like something he just thought of he's this been wanting something. this for a while exactly. and here is here's lady you're going to support him yeah. that's wonderful that's wonderful when divorce court before your vows continues did an ambush at the car dealer cost this couple cash do you agree with erica that a stint in the military will help dwight learn to be assertive Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce court before your vows continues. I read your compatibility tests, and while my compatibility test is meant to examine the scope of some things, mm -hmm. both of you had one focus and one focus alone. You want him to be more assertive and manly, and you want her to let you be more assertive and manly, okay? <laughs> Which I found to be an odd dichotomy. <laughs> So, I mean, and everything you said had to do with, I need him to be more like a dude, and I need her to let me be more like a dude. Oh, no. So why don't you tell me what it is you believe you need for him to do in order to fill those shoes you're asking him to fill? Little things like, you know, just making the initiative to defend us. I know a lot of times I... In the beginning of our relationship, I was attacked. I felt attacked by his family, and he just sat there and, you know, let it happen. And there's a lot of things I just feel like I was raised, you know, with my mother and my father. And, you know, they were at one as a team. And sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like, like, Dwight, don't do this, you know, with the whole car situation, making poor, bad decisions. Tell me about the car situation. We had discussed prior that we were going to wait until February. Uh, it was around July when he purchased the car, but we said, oh, I know you need a car. We'll wait until February and we'll buy a nice used car mm -hmm. um, because that's what we could afford. However, around August, he purchased a, a fairly new car and he didn't have any, you know, background prior knowledge to, you know, purchasing vehicles and he just went and he got a vehicle that was way overpriced and the payments for it are entirely too high. And we've been back several times to different dealerships now trying to basically lower the payments or trade it in for a, a cheaper car. And so now that adds on to our bills. Right. Instead of him coming to me, I work at a car dealership. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and those are things that, little things like that. He says, I'm poor with finances, but 
sometimes he just is poor with decisions. Okay. Mr. Harley, you want to respond to her accusations that you made an ill-advised purchase of an overpriced car? Okay. As far as the car goes, it was more about my family. They wanted me to have a car before I went to Gainesville, before I moved down there. So basically, they kind of, I would say, almost like a ambush, like a setup almost, I would say. So they pretty much brought me in the dealership and sat me down with the one of the dealers and pretty much like talked me into getting a car. Let me ask you this. Like if they wanted like you to have a car so badly, did they offer to pay for it? No. 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 <laughs> but it was my first car and Not the I knew insurance. I couldn't have got a, I knew I couldn't have gotten a car without a cosigner. So that was the only way they were gonna cosign for me. Okay. At that point. So Okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. Here's what you said about him. He's not assertive, he makes poor decisions, and he procrastinates. He's not doing his job. You said, she needs to let me take charge. She's always complaining. She should clean more. You guys don't communicate well, and that she needs to do better with money. Now, you don't want with the car, but okay, <laughs> that you can't afford. You say, though, that you are passive and quiet during arguments, and you don't like to deal with things at the moment. Right. All of those things say one thing and one thing alone. Judge Lynn Dover's ruling next. Divorce Court. Judge Lynn Toler's ruling right now. Let me tell you what I like about you two. Mm -hmm. I think you're extraordinarily mature for your age. You're 21 years old. You're holding down a good job. You have a good head on your shoulders. I think you make very intelligent de decisions about, you know, finances and money and things like that. Uh, I like you because you're a nice guy and you love her and you want her to be happy and you're serving your country and it's just, you, you're just a good person with a good heart. Let me tell you what the problems are. Mm -hmm. You're 21 emotionally. Mm -hmm. You really are. When you, with the car thing and he needs to stand up and argue, all of that, that's, that's childish. And you, mm -hmm. you shouldn't even want to be interested in that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Because you're trying to move together as personages and, and taking a stand here and him jetting out his chest and barking at people, that's, the, that's not his gig. I mean, if, if something's going down, you know, I mean, he needs to, somebody jumping on you, you he needs to back him up. But, but to jump out the car and be silly, you, you should have followed his lead on that one. Mr. Harley, no one can bestow manhood upon you. You have to attain it for yourself. You said that you were passive, quiet during arguments, don't like to deal with things at a moment. Those are not the qualities of the leader you say you want to be. You say you want her to let you be the man, but you don't do manly things. If she makes herself small and meek enough, it's still not going to make you make better decisions. It's not going to make you any more uh, strong with your family. You know, you a grown man about to go to the Army. Your parents can't tell you what to do about a car. I mean, unless they're willing to pay for it. You can't go home and lie to them about the woman that you're sleeping with. You, you, part of being a man is, I've made my decision, I'm comfortable with my decision, and if my, anyone doesn't like my decision, including my parents, that's fine, but I'm not going to hide because I am a man. So you're looking for her to give you something that she hasn't the power to give you. I think you two definitely ought not get married. Just don't do it. You, you go to the Army, they will man you up. And you will learn to be able to stand on your own two feet and stand on your decisions and then not be afraid and to, and to make decisions based on what you think is right or wrong, not well, based on what somebody is telling you. He'll come back more like you want it. He will. Now, I'm not going to tear up this license because I think you're good people. And I don't want to leave you with that image. So I'm just going to slide it over here and leave it. But uh, I wish you the best and Godspeed to you. Uh, this matter is adjourned. Dwight is ready for his army training, and the couple agrees that his military experience will strengthen their relationship. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll-free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.